Yes, we are live. Okay. I'm just going to go live on Instagram. Okay. So hello and welcome to this evening. To say I am excited is a mass understatement. I've even got my sister here supporting me and my friend Emma. And then we've got, <laughs> and we've got Gary waiting to come on. I'm just going to log on into Instagram so we can go live there too. If you bear with me. Da, 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 da. okay yes it started to get people on hello everybody okay when you come on let me know where you're from um you're gonna have chances to also ask gary lots and lots of questions but when i say that this guy is charismatic he's bloody brilliant when i had a chat with him last week i did not want to get off the bloody computer um okay so i'm gonna introduce you gary because i can see you here i literally i can't wait to get you on live i'm so nervous and excited I'm just going to get the live up. Okay. Let me start. Okay. We are going live. Amazing. So without further ado, I am going to introduce you to the man that literally revolutionized the, e the era of healing. He was the founder of EFT. He's going to talk to you tonight how EFT has adapted his journey, how it became so big, absolutely everything. So let me add him to the screen. Hello, Gary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, this is, you're making me excited dear okay. <laughs> you should have seen the promo video then literally it's like gary craig in the founder of eft revolutionized healing is really really quite dramatic how are you <laughs> well uh i am i am awesome and for me that's a bad day <laughs> i like it i like it <laughs> um so what I've promised everybody is, what I've promised the crowd, we're going to be talking everything to do with your background. Um, and actually, you're not a doctor, which I absolutely love, and you've come in at this uh, from an engineering background. So I want to start off with that and how you think that's helped you with EFT. Well, I, actually, I, I have to give you a little history that goes along with that because it makes it make more sense. <laughs> I know, um, you can tell I'm nervous, can't you? Literally, I've got all my notes written down here and I've gone completely blank. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I, I talk fast and a lot, but you got me beat, dear, so. I'm just contemplating now whether I do EFT or belief code and I don't know which one's going to sort my head out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was always interested in what I call uh, self-help psychology. Yeah. But I didn't even know what that was. I was eight, like 13. I was very involved in sports and baseball and all of that. And I kept, like a youngster would do, I kept imagining, fantasizing, you know, hitting baseballs and all this kind of stuff. And lo and behold, every once in a while, I would find out something I fantasized it actually came true. And so I thought, well, everybody knew that. and But everybody doesn't know that, I found mm -hmm. out later. Um, but... Even though, you know, I went to Stanford and got an engineering degree and all of that, uh, I always had one eye on the self-help psychology kind of thing. You know, it's the you yeah. are what you think you are type Possibly. approach. Okay. So time went on and, you know, I... I I, I was in the engineering business and the investment business and other, other stuff and and then one day, I had this um, incredible spiritual experience. Is I, this what you mentioned in the book? Were yeah. You yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I didn't ask for it. I didn't. I mean, it just showed up. I was I was lying in my bed. Um, one October morning in in um, 1988. And uh, I was trying to go over my list of things to do that I had piled on myself. You know, I, I yeah. tend to say, okay, we'll do that too many times. And it, <laughs> it piles up, you know. And I got very frustrated with that. And I remember saying to myself, who needs this? Now, that's not a very dramatic s sentence, okay? Mm -hmm. But it triggered something extraordinary and how old uh, would you how old were you then when that happened uh i would have been 48 years old wow okay okay i'm i'm 82 at the moment okay. i know i couldn't believe it. i was like bloody hell but anyway anyway so when i said that 
it it wasn't just a rhetorical thing like but but other stuff you know you you say something you think a lot of things within a nanosecond that you know these yeah, yeah, chatter yeah. in your head you know but it was like what a stupid world we're living in look at all the things i've got to do that, that, that i'm not even out of bed yet that, that, that kind of thing and i look back at it and what i did without knowing it is i let go of this world. Yes, that makes so much sense. And when I did that, it's like the world that we know, the world of, you know, we running around in human form inside little separate bodies and conflict with each other and argue and, and have peace on some cases and not peace on all that stuff and illnesses and sicknesses and yeah, other. This is what I'm excited to get really into. And yeah, go on, sorry, carry on. My head's buzzing. But anyway, when that happened, the world, as you and I know this world at the moment, and our audience knows of this world at the moment, just vanished. And it's like, it was like a vacuum and whoop, came in this other reality. And I recognized instantly that I was in the arms of the creator. Yeah. Now, I had no real religious background. You know, I was sort of Christian because my parents said so but nobody nobody ever really went to church you know? and it's not the first time because obviously you'd been into self-help but from an element of spirituality and um, to some people self-help and spirituality are two different things to me they're not but was any part of you spiritual in the aspect or was this literally like whoa what is this do you get what I mean? It was more like, whoa, what is this? I was not <laughs> expecting it or anything. Now, oh, no. you know, many people listening in may know EFT is, is tapping, but we're going to get to that for, in a moment. Okay. It got preceded by this, this really deep, unusual spiritual experience. It was like it was like one of these near death experiences that you read about and hear about and so on that thousands of people have had by the way. Um but I didn't die. I wasn't close to death. I was just having it anyway. Yeah. Right. And yeah. To, to put that in a healing context at that moment there was nothing that was impossible healing or otherwise in that state. Yeah. Now, that's very hard to, to show somebody. There was no time in there either. And, of course, to hear, to hear there's no time, how can you say there's no time? The time is everywhere. We had to meet today on time, okay? <laughs> but there was no time. There was only a now, not a yesterday, not a tomorrow, only now. Okay? So I remember as I was in that, I said, you know, I could probably, with the ultimate love that was there, and there was only love in that experience, and not human love. Human love is a very small slice of this more spiritual love. Okay. But if I could maintain this, I could walk into a hospital, and my mere presence would start healing people. You know, blood work gets better and lungs, yeah. you know, improve and all, all of that stuff. Just the presence, just the love. The ultimate, the ultimate healer is love. Now, I'm guessing that when I say that. that that's quite, um, so for me, I completely get that. And I, that, that is the, like, you're speaking the language that I understand. But I think because we are in such a world where we are so dependent on pharmaceuticals, it's run by multi-billion pound corporations, that language to a lot of people could be quite triggering. But actually, if they look past that trigger and they, they see what it is, like if we think about living in fear, we think about living in stress, that weakens our immune system. Yeah, when we're yeah. living in joy, pleasure, love, we are stronger mentally, physically, and emotionally. And it has a direct impact on your body. So to be fair, actually, you're talking my language. I know you're talking quite a few people's language on here, but there's some people like, oh, what is? <laughs> well, I've talked to many people since, and I will say things like, you know, there's a, there's a power, a healing power within you. Mm -hmm. uh, that is that can can go far beyond what we're used to here, far beyond the drugs and the surgeries and all of that. You can do it yourself, and intuitively, and I'm guessing the mm -hmm. audience is there too, most of them anyway. Intuitively, yeah. you know, yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're ringing my bell, okay? But I don't know how to get to it. I don't know how to access it well. 
you know, the kind of healings that go on here are, are generally categorized as miracles. And I, I tend to think they shouldn't be miracles. They should, they should be routine. Okay. I agree. Okay. But we're not, we don't see them as routine. They're not advertised as routine. <laughs> Why do you think that is? So with the knowledge, with the models that you know, and that's in your book, I personally believe that this knowledge is suppressed on purpose because when you know how to heal yourself, there's no money in that. Well, I'd love to know your views. Are we on the same wavelength, Gary? Well. <laughs> I'm looking know, at you now. <laughs> I would agree with that. There's, there's, there's. Yeah. Little or no money in it. I mean, that doesn't mean therapists can't learn to do this and help people and people can learn to help themselves and if, spend a little money for some training or something. But nothing, nothing like the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands that often go into some form of healing that doesn't always work. Do you know what? So when we spoke as well, I think this is a really important thing to, to mention. So when you were creating EFT way back, you started to look into like the medical professionals. And again, I, I completely agree there's a time and a place for that. But when you were looking into it, you realized that they didn't know what the, the cause was. All they had for every single yeah, disease, yeah. everything, they had the symptoms, but they didn't have a cause. Every go on, I'm going to let you go into it because you, you explain it far more articulate than I do. Well, yeah, yeah, that's right. And that's, uh, talk about, you, you're giving a link to my book below this video yes, or something? Yes, Okay, it's a free ebook, and it gives you all. But I'll summarize that part of it, and then we'll get back to your original question, which I talked too much. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, I, now I lost my train of thought. Give me the question again. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot it myself. No, we're just saying about how you, when you started really looking into healing, because to be, to be fair, you literally did revolution. Revolution. I can't pronounce the word. Okay. You literally okay, wait, started wait, wait. a new era of healing, yeah. and when you did that, go on. Yeah, well, actually, that wasn't where we were. I remember where we were. So let me let me let me carry on. Let me carry on with that. Um, now, look, I just lost it again. See, see, when you get to be you, when you get to be eighty-two, you lose things. Okay, that's a belief, Gary. Um, so yeah. I think you were talking about when you started looking into um, all different diseases, everything. You started to understand that nobody knew what the cause was. Yeah, yeah, ca cause, 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 so, yeah. I am fascinated. I have many, 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 many good friends who are MDs, you know, doctors and so on. And you've already alluded to this, but let's talk about it a little bit because it fits yeah. in here very nicely. Um, I would ask them about cause. In fact, I, I looked up on um, WebMD, which is one of the big medical websites that, you know, you can put in yeah. leukemia or you can put in, you know, this disease or that, whatever it is, and it will tell you all these things. But when it comes to cause, it will say, almost invariably, it will mm -hmm. say, well, doctors don't know the real cause for this or the real cause isn't unknown for this. But it'll go on to say, however, your hered heredity might have a might have a piece in it and if you have this other disease that might contribute to this disease and it'll say things like that and just to give an example it might say about parkinson's disease for example uh that, that has something to do with the dopamine production in the brain okay dopamine and so we, we point to dopamine as or the production of dopamine inappropriate production of dopamine yeah. as the cause Yay. But then, you know, the engineer in me says, well, what causes that? <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, and there is no answer. Yeah. There is no, I, I went, I, I've got a whole bunch of them listed in my website. I've been looking at them. In my book, I mean, I got a whole bunch of those things in there. And in and, and the medical profession, with rare exception, I, I couldn't find any true cause, okay? And yet, as you and I, you alluded to earlier, and let's go over that piece now. Okay. Um, when we are carrying around, and every doctor agrees with it. I've never met a doctor that does not agree with what we're going to say now. And actually, do you know what? We will have doctors online. So for the doctors are online, we'd love to know your thoughts. Oh, I'd love to have them tell me why <laughs> this is not correct. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I've had this conversation so many times, you know. But anyway... Um, when you're carrying around anger or a negative emotion, guilt, for example, or fear and this kind of thing, when you're carrying that around, your system creates a, my 
non-medical term, cascade of net negative chemistry. You know, adrenaline goes out of balance. Yeah. Cortisol goes out of balance. Hundreds of repair mechanisms and chemical equations in the body that are necessary for health get compromised. I mean, hundreds, not just yeah. you know, one or okay. And so the immune system, ta-da, trumpets, you know, goes to the rescue. And if it didn't, you'd be in trouble because of all that negative chemistry. So it does, and it takes, you know, it takes care of that, you know, blah, 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 blah. So the immune system is busy trying to handle your negative emotions. And we're talking about not just, I'm angry at the moment at so-and-so for whatever they did. You know, it's when you carry it around in the background and you're not consciously aware of it. And then oh, it, triggers, I, it triggers all the other times when you have the anger as well, doesn't it? And it brings all the other anger up. So you, you're constantly feeling it. It's constantly being added to the, to what's already there. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're, you're running around. You're running around with all this negative chemistry in your body. It, it becomes routine to you. And, and especially, and I see this so often, uh, uh, Jess, so often, especially when well, a student of mine would come and say, listen, one of my big problems is that I was abused big time as a child. I was physically abused. I was criticized. I may have been sexually abused and, and on and on and on that goes. And even though they may have gotten to a point where they deal with it, yeah. it's still kicking around in the background. They are resenting, you know, their Angry parents or the abusers or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Shame goes on, you know, and all of that. And then we need freedom from that stuff. Okay. Yeah. So when you get freedom from that stuff, which we, can, we, we now know how to do, okay, we'll, we'll be talking about that as we go along. But when you get freedom from that stuff, there's more peace within you. Jess, am I talking too fast? No, no, I'm looking at the comments. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at like literally people are saying like, it's so true. Everyone is agreeing. So when I'm looking here, we've got so true. I'm glad people are seeing it. I heal myself from fibromyalgia. It makes sense. Everyone is completely in agreement. Oh, with you. okay. Well, to all those people, I don't see that stuff here, okay? But to all those people, here's a kiss from California. Okay? <laughs> Send one to me, Gary. I want one of those. <laughs> <laughs> you get, you get oh, two or God. three, okay? How's that? <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry. But anyway, 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 so, but that was always a puzzle to me. I mean, here is our big pharmacy institutions our medical schools and all of this going and research institutions spending billions a, a year on all kinds of research to cure this and cure that they don't cure anything they take care of symptoms and maybe in some cases symptoms go away and we don't see it anymore and they call that a cure okay mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean i mean you haven't cur cured the cause you you put in some chemicals some drugs or you removed a tumor or you did something but those are all aiming at symptoms a tumor is a symptom it's not the problem it's a symptom of the problem okay mm -hmm. so so we spend billions on all that and they don't know what causes anything <laughs> you know? and you don't have to be a stanford trained engineer to figure out that there's something wrong with that sentence i just said <laughs> so when did you actually make the transition then from being the engineer and like sort of going to well how did you create because i know you you studied with i can never pronounce the word um what psycho uh, what's the word i'm looking for you psychotherapy psychosomatics, yeah you stood in then is that how eft evolved or how did you how well, did you actually okay. get into it? Do you... <laughs> that goes back to the, your original question, which I never <laughs> finished answering. Okay. <laughs> I, have, I have the tendency to do that, Gary. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's, that's okay. That's okay. So, so anyway, I was, I was always very interested in you are what you think you are kind of psychology, et cetera. And then, and then one day, I had, had a girlfriend who was an associate of mine at, at the very early stages. And she had heard about this psychologist. His name was Roger Callahan, um, who was taking care of people's phobias in five minutes. He had written a book called The Five-Minute Phobia Cure. Now, conventional psychotherapy, phobias, you know, you're, you're into this for months or years, and maybe you'd never get over it. But here was Roger at least claiming that he would take care of phobias in five minutes. Well, I'm interested, so I call him up. 
And I say, I'm, I'm Gary Craig. I don't have any psychology background, et cetera, uh, you know, like you have. He's a PhD in psychology. But can I take your course? He says, sure. Did you have a phobia? <laughs> Well, I don't have, no, I don't have a phobia, but I was, <laughs> inter- <laughs> I was interested in what he was doing. So he sent me some, I sent him a little money, he sent me some books, and I ended up signing up for his course and this kind of thing. And I was fascinated in, in the essence, the essence of this course. And this is before, this was after, this was after I'd had my spiritual experience. Okay? Yeah. I had that experience, I just didn't know what to do with it at the, at the time. Now I meet Roger. And, and Roger then, then starts giving me some training. And his training was, well, one thing the psychotherapy field doesn't do is, is pay attention to the acupuncture meridians and their role in being able to heal someone's emotional issues. All right. Um, and so it, what he would do would have people with their, his fingertips tap on certain meridian points in the body. The idea being that there's a, when, when people are thinking about their war trauma experience, for example, yeah. or a childhood abuse experience, and they were getting all this, to go tap on these places, on these yeah. various meridian points. Idea being they are disrupted. Uh, yes. The energy and you said balancing energy down, then they, they calm down. And just about everybody who would do that would report... Oh, I feel, I feel very relaxed. Okay. And then if it's done properly, we would say, well, okay. Now that memory you had in the war where you had to shoot that young boy and then, you know, well, that doesn't seem to bother me much anymore. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and it, it, I just simplified these things a little bit to get the idea across. There's, you got to customize this stuff to, to your client to do it really well. But with the proper customization, these war veterans with PTSD, where they couldn't sleep at night, because they're, they're afraid of their nightmares. Okay, that's why. Why go to sleep when you're just gonna get traumatized with your nightmares, okay? And so that, that's, a, that's being in a mess. And they had temper tra- tantrums and all kinds of stuff. Vanished, vanished. That's not to say these events in their lives, the negative events, are still their favorite dinner time topic. Yeah. But they don't sting yeah. anymore. They don't. They just. They can talk about them like it was a shopping trip. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Now that, in and of itself, is a major, major, major move in the psychotherapy field. Because this is as well, like we're talking. What was the one, when was this? Is that around that? It would have been the seventies, would it, or the the eighties? No, it would be the early 90s. The early 90s? Yeah, yeah. Well, so again, back then, it was quite a very new, wasn't it? No oh, one would have been really oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, imagine, I mean, there are some people in your audience are familiar with EFT and the tapping. To them, it's no longer weird, okay? Yeah. But when you, when you first bring it out, yeah. you do this, and what happens? Yeah. My migraine headaches yeah. go away? What, what, what? My back pain vanishes? I mean, you t- What? <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it looks stupid, does it not? You know, it, and the old yeah, 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 yeah all me. that. It looks, it looks <laughs> dopey. And I, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get caught in public doing that. Well, yeah. okay. Well, all right. So I wrote a book about it. You know, I, um, I, I what Roger was doing. We had these interesting conversations. I'm a scientist engineer, okay? He's, okay a psycho- right, yeah. he's a psychologist trying to be a scientist. And what he, what he was calling science, I'm going, uh, d- d- Roger, no. God. And I'm being polite about all this, all right? And he's being polite to me because he doesn't buy every, my, all my views either. All right? yeah. We had these interesting conversations. And um, I said, Roger, if you're going to ever bring this out to the more of the public... You've got to simplify this thing. Well, he was using. Um, oh, okay, so I get you. So he was bringing his background of psychotherapy, and he was making it a lot bigger than it was, than it needed to be. And then, with your engineer background, that's when you simplified it. Yeah, and that's what we. That's what engineers do. They take all this complicated yeah. stuff, and they 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 say what's really working here, and we throw the other stuff away yeah. and simplify it. And so I said, Roger, that's what you need to do here. And you know, he was, 
he was not too happy. <laughs> <laughs> Just about, I've got to do something here with my computer, okay? Um, with that, with my, look, writer, I'll do it. I'll make a simplified version. You and I can work on it, and we'll put it out, and people who want the simplified version can do it, and the people who want this complex thing where you throw in terms like holons and algorithms and a whole bunch of stuff that isn't necessary, and a bunch of muscle testing and kinesiology and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And uh, he said, go ahead. So I did. I did. And that's what EFT is. Okay. And did you expect uh, it to get so big? No. How did no. that happen? Well. Actually, I know we spoke about this, but how did you feel when that happened? <laughs> well, the story, the story goes on. Let me unfold the story here. That'll, it'll answer the question. Um, Roger, once he saw my final result, and, and by the way, we had talked over a over hundred times on phone calls and emails about it, so he knew all about it, okay? Mm -hmm. Fine, fine, fine. When he finally saw it, he, 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 he considered it to be competition. Wow. Uh, and so, boy, he didn't like it. Wow. And I'd already spent a bunch of money creating, you know, 200 packages of, you know, with videos and stuff like that, you know, to teach people. And so I said, well, Roger, you can have it if you want it. I, you know, I, I, I had no big desire to own the tapping world. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but his ego wouldn't let him. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, I just, I had a, I knew a, a list of a bunch of people who were interested in this topic. And I just sent out a list and I go, okay, I got 200 of these packages. Uh, just let me know if you want it. Give me your address. I'll send it to you. You know, and if, if you like it, send me some money. And if you don't, give it to a friend or throw it away. Okay. <laughs> just, just touched on that. Do you, because of how that came about and developed and knowing what you know now, do you believe that that process simplified was a divine download or spirit guided? Probably. I hadn't really. That's a good question. But probably, probably it was necessary somehow to do it. OK. Um, but anyway, so. I put that out and, and people really liked it. And, and so I just kept going with it. Okay. And I, I put it on DVDs eventually and so on. But when I put it out, I did not put it out. This is important mm -hmm. with the spiritual aspect. Tapping on the meridians is a mechanical way of bringing peace to the system yeah. an effective way. It's in the hands of millions uh, of people okay. um, worldwide in 23 languages. And I didn't have anything that, that, that it just, it, just it, went, huge. It, it went viral, if you will. Okay. Um, but, you know, before I put it out, I would ask people, I would say, well, you know, I had this spiritual experience and, and to me, the ultimate healer really is God. It's not, it's not, you know, Mm -hmm. all this other stuff but people just were not ready for it yeah. it's like they would roll their eyes at me behind my back typically <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, it's sort of a pat me on the back there there gary you'll feel better tomorrow you know <laughs> they just weren't ready so i wasn't about to put something in that was going to scare people away so, so you, when you developed it, from you from a personal perspective, even though you weren't ready to put it out, the spiritual element from it, were you actively using that spiritual element, like working with God? I mean, I personally believe in God, God, the universe, and what you call now the unseen therapist. Or did the unseen therapist, has, is that, I know that's where it's evolved to now, but were you always working with her? Uh, I, at that time, I did not even conceive of the term unseen therapist we'll get to that as we talk more okay um and i i had no idea because i i was in that spiritual experience for i think a few minutes and came back out and i'm trying to get back into it okay mm -hmm. but it was i don't know how to explain it but somehow or other i fell out of it and most people do most people <laughs> with a, uh near-death experiences and so on have it and then they're here again, and they don't know how to get back to it. Okay. So I didn't know how to put it back in. I didn't know how to integrate it at that time. I do. I know now, but I didn't know then. Uh, yeah. What I would do, however, as I was promoting EFT, tapping, um, 
is I would use the phrase, this is best done when it goes through you, not by you. Okay. And that was as close as, and people, people warmed up to that idea. And there's a spiritual thing in there. It's yeah. going through you, yeah, not by you. And I can remember standing on stage and there were hundreds of people, like 500 people come from around the world to a hotel in like Denver or someplace here. Okay. I did this a lot all over the country years ago. Um, I bring people up on stage and I didn't even know what their issues were. I mean, they'd, they'd come up on stage, well, what's your issue? Well, I've got this or I've got that. And then I start asking some questions. And people would go, ooh, in awe, partly, partly because of what the tapping did. All right. Yeah. But mostly it was because, Gary, how do, you, how do you get to the core issue so fast? I mean, you'll ask two or three questions and all of a sudden, bingo, and then you're right into the real cause underneath all of this okay and i didn't know how to answer them but to answer your question i looked back at it and i'm tuning in i'm listening and see uh, imagine this jess you're in front of 500 people they've come from all over the world to see your magic if you will okay? you're, you're, you're on film okay you got to do this right I, I learned early on i can't i could not rely on my own brilliance okay mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I run out of that okay <laughs> i know that feeling gary i know that feeling <laughs> so i i developed the, the ability to just like turn it over I, I was just listening i didn't know what i was listening to but i would get these notions go here go there the the client on stage would say something to me and it would go bingo it was like they said it in all capital letters yeah 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 you know, like, I, go I, there go there okay so i would and next thing you know but there we are and tap 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 and and you know great things would happen so time went on and this spread all over the world um and then i began in 2014 i began asking questions wow okay people, people, yes. people again i said well now I had this spiritual experience and I've, you know, I'm convinced that if we can somehow get a hold of this spiritual love, integrate that in here, put that in the process mm -hmm. that we're going to do better still. Cause therein is your ultimate healer. Therein is the place where you can get your ultimate questions answered because all that knowledge is there. We're just not tuned into it. All right. So let's find a way to tune into it. Let's find, let's find a way to listen to it. And so I came up with the notion of the, and I was telling people in 2014, and now they're going, oh, yeah, really? Oh, oh, tell me some more. Now they're interested for some magical reason. Okay. So up until the 90s, I think, like up until the 90s when it was created, you'd literally stuck to the tap into the techniques that you'd had, tuning into yourself, but never actively push the spiritual element to it. And no. then in 2014, that's really when you thought, right, this, the world's yeah. ready for it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I didn't want to call it the spiritual essence. Yeah. I didn't want to call it God because that, that conflicts with somebody else's religious yeah. understanding. I didn't want to call it Jesus or Buddha or any of that because – or Allah, or or any of that, because that's not generalized enough. It's not generalized enough. Okay. Um, I wanted to get something very non-denominational, so I called it the unseen therapist and defined it as the ultimate loving essence of the spirit within. Right. So, if you want to call it or some member of your our audience wants to call it God, do it because yeah. that's what it is. You're just yeah. going to give it a different name. If you want to say Jesus, do that. If you want to say higher power, do that. It doesn't matter. But we use the name unseen therapist as a kind of a strange but useful you know, name across all religions, all right, and all spiritual practices. Some people choose to call it God or Allah or something like that. It depends on where they come from. But it, it doesn't really matter because we're, we're going to the ultimate loving source. That's the important part of it. 
So I created the Unseen Therapist. And go ahead. Just touching upon that, actually, this is really important to mention. So us now, in the, the world that we live in, still, like, with spirituality, with God, with the universe, with the energies that be, there's a huge community that believe in it, which is myself. But then also, I think we're in this society which demands science, it demands facts. And we have something, like you mentioned in your book, Quantum Physics, which is the most profound like science you could ever yeah. have. Yeah, quantum physics, again, it's suppressed. It's not in the mainstream. It's completely, it's as if it's almost sort of brushed off. Why do you think that is? Well, there's no, to use your phrase, there's no money in it, okay? But, but the quantum physicist, which to me is our premier science, science, yeah. okay? Uh, it looks, it looks, it didn't try to do this to begin with. It was almost forced to do it by their findings, but it looks beyond this human experience, okay? Because mm -hmm. the findings just pointed them there, okay? And so while quantum physics has many jaw-dropping conclusions in it, one of them, to simplify the whole thing, is there's no such thing. I mean, we need a drum roll. Don't worry, there's no such thing as separation. Yes. Everything. And see, quantum physics, the quantum part means little tiny things. So it's studying little tiny things like atoms, okay? Yeah. And uh, parts of atoms and the parts and parts of atoms and this kind of thing. They start studying these things and they find a whole different behavior when you really start studying them. It takes very sophisticated mathematics to do all this and so on. But they go, what? And among the things they found is all atoms, all atoms, which means the atoms in my body and the atoms in your body. Yeah. And the atoms in every body who's listening to us are all connected. Yeah. They are. We're not aware of it. We're yeah. not aware. It's outside of our awareness. So, but they are, well, let me finish. Oh, God. So, again, I'm to you now. They're all connected into a grand oneness and this is the oneness is a is a good word for my spiritual experience in 1988 this grand oneness that's very hard to understand because our, our senses tell us all day long everything is separate, separate. all right you're so, listening to me with my your separate ears and seeing me with your separate eyes and i seem to be separate and, and there's stuff behind me that's all separate and the da, 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 da. same with you Okay. But no, no, that's that is literally, literally impossible. So we are seeing, I'll let you talk in a minute. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> what we are seeing, what we are perceiving with our senses is an illusion. Yeah. It's a very convincing illusion. Yes. And there's no money in the illusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but if we can aim our healing activities outside the illusion to the real reality, the love that is absolutely there that we're not aware of, we can tune into that. Now we've got something that dwarfs any of our conventional methods. Now you talk. No, no, it's just going on. <laughs> I was going to say now, Gary. No, it's um, it was just leading on from the oneness. So I understand that we're all atoms, but for a long time, I couldn't get my head around. Okay. So if we're atoms, like how I can grab my arm, you know, if we're pure energy, I understand it, but I couldn't grasp it. And it probably about, it's about seven months ago, I had this sound bath. And well, I went, you had, you had what? A sound bath. <laughs> a sound um, bath. Yeah, so it's like with gongs and it's all sounds. It's, it's like a sound healing ceremony, if you will. And it took me to the divine. And this, like this, it was a feminine voice that talked to me. And she showed me how we were literally all one. We're all connected. We were all part of the conscious mind. And as we thought things, the thought instantly manifests. But everything is connected. When we see things, all the atoms condense and we see it as a solid. It showed me, well, she showed me, and again, I guess God, the unseen therapist, Buddha, um, just showed me how everything in the world is manifested and connected through well, through whatever it is. And it showed me how sound heals. So when the sound goes through like atoms and cells, it disperses dark, how dark thoughts are condensed thoughts and the light comes in and disperses them. But everything was connected. And it was that pure love that was just completely unconditional. There was just nothing but yeah. 
I just can't even, you can't, you can't grasp it until you've experienced it, can you? No. And that love you're, you're speaking about is embedded in everyone, uh, although it yeah. is covered over by a bunch of ego stuff. You know, yeah. our resentments we have and, you know, the, 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 the things to do list and, uh, you know, all these other concerns we have and worries and doubts, yeah. you know, it's covered over by that stuff. But what we do, what we do with, with our optimal EFT, it is now called OEFT, optimal EFT, um, is to customize this to the person to actually get down to their specific events where they've been abused, for example, or they did something they're guilty for, or all this other stuff. Um, and and we can very nicely, with the unseen therapist's help, and we've got a whole process for that, start unloading that. And as we do, as we do, people get more peace. Their relationships unfold more harmoniously. Yeah. And as that peace gets better and better, some of their physical symptoms start to fade. Okay. Why? Because the immune system now has less work to do to take care of all that yes. baggage. Yeah. And it can now do its regular job, you know, to take care of things which are showing up as disease. Yeah. So going into that as well, because in your on the website, and again, I put the website link so everyone can go in there. You have instant healings. And on here, I've got Pablo's meningitis and stuff that is perceived as completely un. It, it, it managed, I say it again. Uh, it was Pablo's meningitis, and it is. It, oh, 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 oh that, that's one of our cases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. the stuff in there, some of the stories, from a sort of logical perspective and a rational perspective, the stuff that you have witnessed and that you have experienced with other people should never have happened in the world that we live in now. Um, so I just want you to go into some of the stuff that you've witnessed and experienced others go through using optimal EFT and the unseen therapist. So I think this well, is this will blow people's minds. Yeah, okay. Well, I, you don't have enough time for this. But, <laughs> There's uh, one juicy one, Gary. <laughs> well, <laughs> anybody here can go to my website, emofree.com, okay? okay? And just go to the homepage and you can scroll down and you'll see... I'll put it on the, some, the comments, everyone. Some, some links, some links to uh, things like impossible healings. Uh, there's a whole bunch of those results, spiritual experiences, all, all kinds of things that people have had as a result of this. Um, and Pablo's meningitis is one of them. All right. But I'll give you, I'll give you, a, I'll give you a couple. I'll give, let me give you a couple yes, of them. This okay. is exciting. Get the popcorn uh, out. <laughs> <laughs> this was, this was at the very early stages of, of when I was bringing the unseen therapist out and I was giving a webinar and there, I, we probably had a hundred people or something like that on the webinar. And somebody said from Brazil says, my son has this, I forgot what you call it. It was some kind of a fever, dang fever, I think it was called. But it was supposed to be deadly, very serious. And he had been asleep for like four or five days, hardly ever waking up. And if wake up just momentarily and right back to sleep, et cetera. And she was very worried about him, of course. And she wanted to know, could we do something right there on the webinar for her son? And I said, well, we could try. Okay. And so what I did was I had, and this is important. This is important. It's one of the really good features of the unseen therapist. You see, love is best when shared. Okay. And so what I asked everybody to do, and I, I just, I, I led them. This is all recorded in a webinar, okay, um, on Zoom. So I just sort of led everybody into surrogately becoming this little boy, he's about five or six years old, becoming this little boy and imagining love in the form of unseen therapist or whatever they wanted to call unseen therapist, coming into this young boy and, and spreading love throughout him 
taking care of all disease symptoms and causes and whatever. Because I didn't know the real cause here. The, the cause of, well, he got a virus or something. But, but anyway, I asked the whole audience to do that. And while they were doing it, we had a little silence while everybody closed their eyes and trying to do this exercise. The little boy wakes up and he starts <laughs> he starts fussing. And I can <laughs> I'm sorry I, I'm sorry to admit this, okay. Yeah. <laughs> At the moment I wasn't too happy with that because I thought he was screwing up our experience. He wasn't supposed to do that. He was <laughs> really he was the experience. He wasn't supposed to do that. He wasn't supposed to do that, you know. And that's but then I got it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was just it was working for him faster than I thought it should. Okay. <laughs> but he woke up and, and it seemed to be fine. And his mother wrote me uh, a few days later, he was fine ever since. Okay. Now I gotta say something. Does that happen every time we do it? No, we're still refining this. And uh, we may not have gotten any place because I didn't have a chance to get down to what may have caused it other than some virus. He's probably dealing with some kind of emotional stuff and whatever, and, but I didn't have a chance to go there, but that's what happened. Okay. Now, another one is more current time. There's been lots of stuff happened like that in the meantime. Okay. There's a fellow by the name of Andre and uh, you will see Andre in that list where you can scroll down and, find all these articles there's this, something that's called um, it's called the unseen therapist at work and there's a couple of articles in there interviews with andre andre came to me and said gary uh, you know i just had a liver transplant he said all of my life i've had agoraphobia i can't go out of my house i have to take anxiety pills all the time at the van you know, I can't do this and I can't do that. And I have something called urticaria. I didn't know what that was. It has something to do with heat in the body. Okay. Um, can you help me? And so I had a little time. So I said, okay, let's do it. All right. Now, he worked on his agoraphobia, being able to go out of his house it, farther and farther distances in cars and things like this. And that seemed to go away pretty quickly, quicker typically than I would think. But it did. It did. And with that, met his need for the anxiety pills, the Ativan. It just vanished as well. All right. And we didn't even work on his urticaria. Wow. That was taken care of in the background. He just told me later, I haven't had my urticaria for some time. Okay. And he had oh, he had severe OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, yeah. I didn't even know he had it. And that got taken care of in the background as well. Wow. Now, I, I, wonder, I really want to emphasize, because I don't want to mislead people. He is one of our more responsive uh, students, clients. Okay. Not everybody gets that kind of amazing result right off the bat and so on. Some are readier for this than others are. Yeah. There's a whole process, but it gives you an idea of what's possible. And he just, I just had him on one of my webinars a couple of weeks ago. And he was talking about bringing in the unseen therapist on his own for something. Okay. And he was talking about how he could feel the unseen therapist actually blend in with his body. He could feel her blend in with his body as some healing was taking place, etc. Now, for those of you in the audience who want to, you know, come this direction and get some training and all of that, I'm not pointing out saying this is guarantees of what's going to happen. I'm telling you, these are the possibilities. And you will get out of this what you put into it. In fact, I have a little phrase that goes, for those who will, tis the ultimate skill. No problem. Do you know what, Gary? You're talking to the already converted. Like, the audience is so open to this. And they know that 90% of what they facilitate and the clients they work with, it has to come from the client to be open to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But... I've seen a lot of things happen here that didn't happen with tapping. I've saw a lot of things with tapping that didn't happen elsewhere either. Okay. Yeah. So it's another progression up, but it's a, um, 
to summarize all of that, probably the main advantage of using the unseen therapist, in addition to other stuff I've talked about, is the more you engage yourself with this process, the more you are able to listen to this guidance. You're listening. She, she's always speaking. It's a, Auntie Therapist is a she, by the way, okay? She, she, she's always speaking to, always just, guiding. We just aren't listening. Just touching upon that, actually, because so the voice I heard, <clears throat> I've heard, um, pardon me, the voice I heard when I went into that experience in the sound bath, it was, it was a she. And then I've heard another voice when I was pregnant with my son. This It sounded like an angel. And she whispered, it's a girl, and he's a boy. So I don't know what was going on there. But why do you think we believe that she is a man? So do you know that like when we, we think of God, God is very much a man, whereas my understanding is the unseen therapist. Um, well, is, is, yeah, go on, I'm it's, just it, it's, on it's, it's just conditioning. God, God does... Uh, uh, it's a little off color here, but God does not have a penis. He doesn't have a gender. He doesn't. <laughs> <He's a minor. laughs> Nobody has ever seen God's genitalia. Okay. So, but, but I use, I, I created the she thing and for, it's for the purpose of, I didn't want it to be in the conventional yeah. thing to replace somebody else's, but I know there are she divinity things as well. Okay. But, I, I didn't want to do that. So, of course, she... Oh, also, in that, don't we? <laughs> okay. But also, she... W women tend to be more gentle than men as a general rule. Okay, That's not true of every woman, but it's, it's a general rule. They're considered to be softer, more gentle. So, yeah. And that's what we're, we're getting. We're going to get the softer, more gentle you out of you so you have a better shot at getting peace instead of all this turmoil that shows up as disease wow we've had, honestly gary you've had so much love i think i think a few people have got a crush on you we've had i love gary gary's amazing um i'm just see what questions i've got here so, well they can wait 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 they can they can send me a, they can send me a ferrari if they want <laughs> okay put your address and we'll send it out to the email list um <laughs> what else did i want to ask yet so just, just going back to it then, what are your hopes? So how do you how do you want optimal EFT to adapt? Or do you think it will adapt? Or what do you think is, is going to happen now? And just leading on from that, how do you think the world is evolving to this? Because sometimes I feel like we're, the world's really on track with us going into um, like the beliefs, the spirituality. And then there's another part where it's like, just completely stuck. What are your views on? what's going to happen or have you had any insights or any downloads or any, any inner wisdom or knowledge come through? Well, I'm trying to be succinct here. Okay. <laughs> Just say it as it is, Gary. I don't mind. <laughs> um, let, me, let me start off with this. this is, okay. In my view, and we're probably a long way from this. All right. In my view, the medical schools should all teach this approach before they teach all the invasive approaches where you've got to, you know, you put pills in your chemicals in your body and radiate it and cut it and all that stuff. Okay. It's my view that if the first year of med school was dedicated to let's do this correctly and let's forget all about everything else and use that as a backup. All right that the need for drugs, pills, surgeries, and the like would decrease by at least 50%, probably 80%. That's my view. Okay. Everyone's agreeing with you. We've got 100%. Yes, you're not alone in that feeling. Well said. Everyone <laughs> yeah, okay. in the agreeing here. Well, yeah. Now, that uh, that's a strange request because, you know, the pharmaceutical in industry makes so much money on us being sick. Yeah. You know, and so here's the pills, and no, 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 no. And doctors tend not to be trained to counsel with someone about what happened to them when they were six years old, and did they, did, are they still feeling bad about that? Okay, I and mean, that's not what a doctor—that's not their own self-image. Okay, yeah. 
And so when, when we go to a doctor, we tend to want to go say, well, okay, give us, give us this magic pill. Cause I, you know, whatever it is hurts or it isn't working well. I, okay. Okay. Side effects. I don't care for the moment. I wanted to, you know, all of that goes on. All right. So it, it's such a, different approach but i would like to see that happen and i think we would get a whole lot more now i'm not the only one out there i'm sorry go ahead do you think it will happen in time i I just don't know how much time okay in time yes as as the kind of thing that i'm doing the kind of thing that you're doing and we're not the only ones in this field that are using spiritual methods you know to bring improvement yeah. about there are others i'm the only one that i know of that um deals with the cause in the way that we do we're finding the cause is actually specific events in one's life uh when when i was you know that the moment when i was six years old and my father hit me in front of my friends at my birthday party and i'm still angry at him or i got molested or i got thrown off of a truck or you know trauma 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 okay um those and the all the emotional turmoil that goes with them Mm-hmm. It causes this cascade of negative chemistry or the cause, if not the cause, it's certainly a major contributor to all these diseases. So, so I would love to see that concept take hold. And I'm the only one doing it that way. That doesn't mean other ways don't work and aren't useful. Yeah. I'm the only one doing it that way. And it's a way you can measure, by the way. Oh, yeah, I'm remembering now this thing happened when I was, you know, five or eight or whatever. The teacher said this. Oh, I felt bad. I'm a 10. I can still sweat. You know, I can. My heart's pounding just thinking about it. We bring an unseen therapist. And I'm a 10 on a 0 to 10 scale. We bring an unseen therapist properly. Takes training. Okay. But we bring an unseen therapist. And I can't even find it. I'm not sure I can remember it. You know, that's how clean it can be. And so as we take care of these things that nicely yeah. and often that quickly, and we and then we can start measuring it. it was a 10 or a nine. Now it's a zero or a one or a two or, you know, whatever. We can measure it. We can measure and see the result right before our eyes or within our own yeah. feeling, feeling system. Okay. It's funny, isn't it? Would you say, do you know when people say that they have those character building memories and that didn't... They have, wait a minute, they have the what memories? So it might be a British term, but in, in England, we say, oh, you know, it was a character building memory or they'll say something has happened to them, but they'll believe it hasn't affected them, but it would be part of building their character. Whereas actually my belief is they're the things that have affected them the most because oh, they have... Yeah. <laughs> Almost invariably. See, <laughs> see, people have these things happen to them and they just, they don't know it can be, it can be so cleanly and so nicely resolved so they have peace about it they don't realize they can do that so they just live with it and they're used to it yeah. um and, and that's all they're, so they get quite surprised when they can actually use this and go where is it yeah. okay I think as well, when I read in your book, you put, you mentioned in there that you get so many people ask you, well, can it be used for this? Can it be used for that? So you only mention a few of the different things. But I think the main thing that, well, you'd want people to understand is what you're talking about, and, and like optimal EFT, belief coding, energy healing, like working with God, anything can be healed, but it all determines how open that person is as a channel to welcome that healing. Is that the understanding? Well... I, I don't know if it's, if it all depends. A lot of it depends on what I call your readiness. Okay. Mm-hmm. But for example, for example, let's say somebody is, uh, has been abused by their father growing up. Okay. He's always criticized them, hit them, you know, maybe even molested them. I mean, all kinds of things happen. And so the child who is now the adult and my client, all right. Um, is upset about that. They are angry about that. Shame on their father 
you know, he screwed up my life. Da 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 da. da. So we'll we'll use our process. Okay. Now, typically they will get much better at it instead of just ready to come right out of their shoes, out of their socks about you know talking about their father and how bad he is and da da da. We, uh, we start to take the edge off of that and some more edge and some more edge. And now he's not quite the bad guy. He had a not so nice upbringing himself. Okay. He doesn't know what else to do. I mean, this is all reframes and, and things like that, but, but this is an important concept. All of us have my term free will. That is, we have the ability to believe what we want to believe, hide what we want to hide, forget what we want to forget, not look at this and all that kind of stuff. Okay. And the unseen therapist is not going to interfere with your free will to believe as you wish. Not going to do that because that would be like the um, thought police. That's a very unloving thing to do. You can believe this, but no, not that. You can't, you can't have that belief. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so what happens, what happens there is sometimes people will, they want to keep a little piece of this because they they get a little charge that are beating up their father in their in their head or that or they're resentful for that person who stole from them or da, 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 da. so we we get a lot better at it but now now the challenge becomes how can we be complete how can we become thorough how can we clean the slate completely and we're working on that and we're getting progress but we're still refining we're still refining yeah do you mind if I ask if anybody's got any questions for you? Because honestly, the comments have been going absolutely insane. Someone's referred to you as a new era god. <laughs> it's like Gary is the new era. I was like, yeah, I have to agree. He totally is. Well, 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 well would, you, would you mind having that person send a little note to my ex-wife? <laughs> I can screenshot you this, Gary. I'm going to put it right above your head. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to see if there's any questions. We've had literally loads. I've been trying not to look at it. Um, okay, they'll all come in in a moment. Um, okay, so this journey has started so beautiful. Is there anything? So one thing that I found when I've done belief coding, there tends to be people who really believe in it and they, they tend to have the biggest breakthroughs. But then a lot of people have the belief and the conditioning that they are unhelpable or that nobody can help them. So how would the unseen therapist work with them? Well, OK, remember, now they have free will. And yeah, if they I'm really... Some of the questions where you answer if that's all right. OK, they... they... You have free will. And if you really don't want to get beyond it, if you really want to hold on to your resentments or your anger or whatever the case may be, if you really want to sit in that wheelchair because you get love and attention you didn't get before and and so on, if you really want to do that, unseen therapist is not, not, not going to interfere with that. That's where the skill comes in because we can still get, we can get beyond it, but the the skill comes in from the, well-trained therapist because that therapist now is not a therapist in the classical sense of the term where i'm going to a therapist i'm paying them money they're supposed to fix me kind of thing okay rather the therapist is an assistant to the unseen therapist and what the where the skill comes in for the therapist is to start taking the client's reasons for not wanting to get any better or resisting or whatever and start reframing and we have a whole section on reframing and so on and start reframing all of this and let the client see it through a different set of glasses and properly done they go oh oh and and so then now you start to you start to fade off some of this resistance i i call it taking the edge off and that, now they feel a little better. Well, gee, I'll try that again. Yeah. So there's a skill in there. If the, but if a client does not want to get out of their wheelchair, to use that example, unseen therapist, your choice. Okay. We've had a question here, <clears throat> which is brilliant. How do you move someone's mind from non-spiritual to being aligned with this intention? Well, in a way, I just answered that. Uh, But if the client says, oh, I don't believe in God and whatever. um, I mean, if they truly don't, if they're truly an atheist and they truly do not want to go anywhere near any of this 
woo-woo spiritual stuff. That's their choice. And so, so I'm not going to shove it down their throat. I'll just get resistance. I'll lose rapport and everything with them. So I'll say, well, there's got, there's another approach here. So, you know, we can use tapping and, 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 and off we go. You know, we, we, it's second best, but it likely to bring them some results. Yeah. We've had another one, which is brilliant as well. Can you resolve a problem that you can't find the root cause of? I get so downhearted when I'm told I have to remember. I would like to know what, have to remember what? Have to remember of an event? So I'm thinking this might be a belief code. So sometimes we work with the body. To, um, so we work with kinesiology to find out what emotion is trapped, we call it. And then usually a memory comes up or a memory surfaces, but sometimes a memory doesn't come up. So we work with like feelings and thoughts. But would the oh, unseen okay. therapist work with, um, say, for example, if somebody has... I don't know, like an issue like anxiety or a phobia, but they don't know what the root cause is or no memories coming up. Would the yeah. therapist okay. still be able to help? All right. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to hit the bullseye with this, but let me give it a shot because there's some important okay, go. stuff behind this. Um, I'm, I'm going to rephrase the question a little bit. Okay. And that is, Gary, I can't remember my childhood or these any bad events or so on. I can't remember them. So what do I do now? Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now we're getting into some of the guts of our process, but these specific events don't require that you have, you know, all the details. In fact, we're not that interested in getting the details just right. What we are interested in is your emotional response as you remember it now. Now I remember when I was six years old, if I don't remember any details at all, I can just, I can remember I was, a, I was frightened all the time. I'm making that up. They can typically remember that. Okay. Yeah. They don't know why they don't know specific events. They don't know any of that. That often happens. They don't know anything. If there's been a, some kind of sexual abuse, because that tends to get just repressed mm. and they don't remember it until they're 50 or something. Okay. So what you can do in a case like this, to 50, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> so, what you can do in a case like that is make up an event. You can actually make it up. Because oh, what we're okay. what we're interested in, you can make up the details. Wow, okay. What we're interested That's in is the process. The, you'd consciously make them up, or you'd allow your subconscious to make them up. Either way. Yeah. You can make it up yourself. But the important thing is, see, you'd make something up, and, and typically you would make it up in the most exaggerated way, even if you were pretty sure that didn't happen. But you could be very graphic about it, okay? Yeah. And the, if you put yourself in a made-up specific event at age two, when you probably wouldn't remember anyway, okay? If you put yourself in a specific event at such an age, and imagine yourself being thrown across the room and bouncing off a wall, for example, or something like that, and being frightened, or you felt guilty because you caused it, or whatever, okay? Whatever you've made up, even if it is factually wrong, if you get an emotional, whoa, on that, something needs resolved. And you can treat that specific event, albeit made up, yeah. As though it was a real one, because what you're really aiming at is the emotional response okay. that you want to you want to fade off. You know. So. Okay. What about this one? Can an attachment being released um, with come? Can an attach? Sorry. Can an attachment being released come back at a later stage? So if you resolve something, will it come back? If you resolve something completely, and I, now I'm going back to being thorough with all of this. If you resolve something completely, completely, uh, the, the odds of it coming back are very small. If, if it does come back, it's probably some other issue that you didn't even address that's showing up. Uh, and we call those aspects. That happens a lot. It, it's something you need to learn um because oftentimes you'll take a specific event I'll, we'll take a, i'm going to take a war memory for example you'll take that specific event you know, i'm you know the, the soldier is really worked up about it you take that specific event collapse it 
and he's fine about it. All right. Let me give you a little example. I did that with a fellow on stage, a Vietnam veteran. And he had a memory that he had a memory that had him so tied up. He had to send one of his friends out on a mission. And that friend ended up getting killed by a sniper. He guilt, 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 guilt. Okay. Come to find out, while we got rid of that, he could now talk about that. And seemingly that was out of the way. Seemingly. Yeah. What showed up later is it came back, but it came back differently. And that's what people will learn to to do if they take our course and so on. It came back differently. The what what came back was a memory that his father, long before war ever showed up in his world, okay, his father kept telling him, you're responsible for everything. Responsible, 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 responsible. And that we didn't even address with the unseen therapist because it never came up. Yeah. All right. And now that's what's coming up. And so now we have to go back and deal with, I've got to be responsible for everything. And here he is in the war thing. You've got to send people out. I mean, you've got orders to do these things and so on. So, yeah, these aspects will show up. So the answer to your question um, if you do it thoroughly, yeah, it's probably gone. But don't be surprised if some piece of it, some aspect yeah. shows up again. And, and that's good because it's showing you more. Another piece is not done yet. This is a great one, actually. And I want to touch upon the story that you told me um, about the uh, young lad with his acne. So Lisa's asked, has Gary got any tips working with children? And I loved when we had the conversation, you told me about the mum that came to you. Well, this was a not a child. It was a 20-year-old boy. <laughs> oh, 20-year-old. <laughs> Do you want me to answer this question? or the... Yeah, go answer this question. Okay. To me, before I ever brought the unseen therapist to the forefront, um, people would do tapping, and, and they would do tapping with children. And you know, the nice thing about it is that you know a child goes to school, they get teased, or they they fall down, and scrape their knee, or you know, somebody yells at them, or they they have their own little traumas every day, every single day, as all as we all do. Okay. They didn't do well on this test or they don't understand this or the teacher yelled at or whatever. Okay. But these things happen. Okay. So to take that child, five, six, seven, eight, nine, even younger, and ask them as you put them to bed, well, what happened today? Oh, Janie teased me about it. Somebody pulled my hair and you know, this kind of thing. Okay. Well, these are little things that never get resolved as we grow up. They just sort of build. All right. <laughs> and we would call them little and routine, et cetera. But, oh, really? Well, and then kids tend to love, love to be touched. Well, as they're telling the story, they're tuned into it and say, well, okay, a light little mother's touch or daddy's touch or something. They like it, you know, and you're, you're doing tapping to help resolve this issue. You do that every night. You've got a kid that's going to grow up with a whole lot less baggage than they did. They would have otherwise. Now regarding unseen therapists, you can still do the tapping if you wanted to. But kids are very good at imagining angels, okay? Uh, fa good fairies. Well, that, what, would the good say, what, would, what would the good fairy think about that? And ask your angels, you know, that kind of thing, okay? Now, that's introducing them to their spiritual power within at a very early age. Very powerful. That's a gift that's a gift. Don't you wish you had that when you were growing up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've got to, my partner, Alex, is watching. I wish you'd have bloody had it, Alex. <laughs> so I get my kids. I've got five children. And our son, Digby, he um, he loves taking his shoes off and <laughs> grounding. So I take my shoes off and I'll ground. Digby's like, Mom, can I take my shoes off and ground? So my question is, Gary, what would you do? If you are really open to this to spirituality, working with angels, because I work with my spirit guides all of the time, uh, work with the guides. But if your husband and your partner's not, <laughs> what do you do then? I, I'm, uh, that, that was a kind of a broad question. Can you get more succinct with it? 
Yeah, it's based there. I want to know. And, and again, part of our community, I find that a lot of the females tend to be really open spiritually. So they instill these spiritual practices into the children, but then their partners are just not that way. So, for example, we have conversations in our house. I personally, I believe in God. Um, I work with my spirit guides. I call my angels safe. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to teach this to the kids and my partner Alex he's a little bit more skeptical he's an absolutely amazing fantastic dad but he's like well you know we don't know if this stuff is real I'm like I know this stuff is real I'm telling you this stuff but he doesn't quite believe in it um and again it's so what would you say for somebody who possibly doesn't believe or what would you like how how would you resolve <laughs> I need to get him talking to the unseen therapist <laughs> Well, one of the things I've learned over time, is, yeah, this is just this is just about a husband or a spouse or a relative. Yeah. There are people in every family who just aren't buying this. That's all there is to it. Okay, they yeah. they don't want to they don't want to go there. It conflicts with whatever they want to believe, and that's okay. But you, I found you can't say, "Well, sit down and listen to me," because I'm going to give you the truth uh, yeah. here. Okay. Yeah, I not, try that approach all the time. It doesn't yeah, work. Not not going to work. <laughs> It goes either way. <laughs> but you do it. You can, you can do it. Yeah. Just by your presence. You can, as you, as one of your children maybe has had, got a headache, for example, and you don't use aspirin instead, you bring in the unseen therapists, or you can do tap or whatever you want to do, and the headache gets better, but no intervention from pills or anything else. Okay. Yeah. Well, just let him notice that. Now he may, he may, he makes it. Well, that's just coincidence or something. But then do it again, and do it again, and do it. And then someday his knee is going to hurt for some reason. He banged his knee someplace, got a big bruise on it, or you know sprained his ankle or something. And chances are, you can surrogately, you can without even his cooperation, you can certainly. I do that quite often. I'll be talking to a client and. And can you just go into the surrogacy bit for anyone who doesn't understand what that is? Okay, I'm doing that right now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Um, a client will tell me, a student will tell me uh, that right now they're feeling quite anxious or right now they have a ankle pain or they, their arthritis in their hands is flaring up, or they'll tell me that early. Often I'll, I'll just ask them that anyway. Well, what's going on with you right now? Any, any pains going on? Or something? Oh, yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah, what would you call that a, a number-wise? Is that a two or a 10 or what? Oh, it's an eight or a nine. Yeah, I had, I had it all day. And so while we're now talking about their other issues, I do, it's a form of surrogate work where I am doing this in their behalf. Mm -hmm. Um, remember, we're all one, we're all connected. Yeah. Okay, this, this, this will give you more evidence of that. So while they're doing that, I do something, a surrogate kind of thing called conversational EFT. So while we're talking, I will often, you know, zero them in on some specific event or something that's bothered them. And, and I'm bringing in unseen therapists in their behalf as though I'm them. All right. Now, not every time, but often enough to really get your attention. After we've done that for a while, I said, well, how's the uh, that pain, this arthritis pain? Oh, it's gone or it's, it's a whole lot. What did you do? Okay. Did you do something? <laughs> so that's surrogate work. You can use surrogate work when somebody doesn't want to cooperate with you. Okay. I don't believe in all this stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Someone's asked here, how do you connect for yourself to the unseen therapist? So I know you go into that. In, so in Gary's book, he actually goes into how to work with the unseen therapist on yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um, but how do you, yeah, yeah I'm going to let you answer that. Okay. Well, I'm glad they used the word connect because for new students, that's a word uh, that that people get hung up on. It's like, Oh, I'm going to invite the unseen therapist. I'm going to access God. You know, I better, I better do this right. You know, I better, I better do this. I better connect to use the term in this way where we have a Hollywood moment. You know, I, we need, we need 
angels and harps and orchestras and warm feelings and all kinds of things like that. No. <laughs> Typically, we're nowhere near the ultimate perfect love of the unseen therapist. We're trying to get there. So all, all we're really doing, we, part of the process is called, we recall a loving moment. It's a way of aligning, not connecting with unseen therapists. We align with unseen therapists as best we can. And all we're really doing with that is saying, well, okay, we're not listening most of the time, okay? But for now, we're going to give you a little something and we're listening, all right? <laughs> and so there she is and you've aligned yourself with her. You don't have to connect with a capital C. When I use her in any of these ways, I don't connect myself in all of it, even though I've experienced that. I don't get all this warm, musical, magical connection. No, it's like this. If you have a headache, Jess, and it's a nine, let's say, okay, oh, you can take an aspirin. And chances are, let a little time go by, and that headache now is a two, or it's gone, or it worked, okay? But mm. the reason you know it worked is because your headache went away. Yeah. That's how you know it worked. You, mm. you, when you swallow the pill, it didn't give you warm feelings or play know. music or anything, okay? <laughs> Same thing here. The, the how you know you have connected, aligned, et cetera, is what your results are after you're done. And, and people this, get very confused about that. Would you say as well, so just before you get the results, and is it, so my understanding, when I, when I work with clients, I very much tune into that little voice. I very much tune into that. I mean, I call it like a little spiritual nudge, where, and I feel like it's my guides with me, and they'll tell me to do something or say something. Is it literally tuning, for me, I believe it's tuning in to that voice and trusting that voice, which doesn't yeah. necessarily make any sense. Is that how it feels for you? Well, I'm, well, that's interesting quite how it feels. It doesn't feel any. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know how to articulate what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Well, it doesn't feel anyway to me. And that's, that's, the, that's the point. It doesn't have to feel some magical way. Now, it may. It may. Some people get, whoa, you know, they get, you know, hooray, hooray. But it's not required for results. Okay, we've got this one. This is a great one from Serena. What do you think the next steps are as a collective in raising awareness in how people can help, he sorry, in how people can heal from their own traumas with these types of methods and modalities? <laughs> Big question. <laughs> yeah, well, the next steps are, are simply to dive in, get training and use it. Okay, yeah. that's, I mean, that's, that's it's kind of an obvious step. I, you know, I, Maybe too simple. <laughs> okay. It's true, isn't it? I think that's it. That's literally how you raise a collectiveness and awareness is just by leading by example, like doing doing teachings, teaching, training, helping yeah. people, yeah. allowing it to turn through you. Um, I'm just having a look to see if there's any more questions. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, honestly, everyone here, there's so many comments, Gary. Um, let's have a look. Okay, this is a good one. Can procrastination or money blocks be treated if you don't know why? <laughs> Can the unseen therapist help with those damn money blocks? <laughs> well, the answer is yes. Woohoo! Uh, but let's go over that a little bit. In fact, I, I haven't had a discussion on money blocks for a while, but I can address it. <laughs> There's two questions here, procrastination and money blocks. Okay, yeah. I just had a a meeting with one of our members two days ago on the procrastination bit. All right. But let's go to money blocks first. Okay. In order to make a lot of money, which is usually behind my money blocks. Okay. I, I want to make some more money. <laughs> In my view, there are two things necessary. One of those is the how to's, you know, how do you advertise? How do you find the right product? And, you know, how do you sell whatever it is you want to sell? And, so on. And there are all kinds of books written on that. I mean, they, they, you can fill libraries full of books on how to do this. There's another piece of all that. And, and I don't really address that because there's so many other books to do that. Okay. But there's the unwritten piece, the piece you'd rarely find a, a book on or something that really addresses it well. And that is, what are the emotional blocks that are in my way? 
and and I might have a conversation with this client. I will say, well, finish this sentence for me. I, I might say to somebody, rich people are, and then fill in the blank. And I'll get terms like greedy. They step on people. <laughs> Simon is warm, kind, and generous now. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> they, they, say it again. Simon is warm, kind, and generous. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. But it, a lot it, of, it needs to be that. For a lot of people, that's not the case. No. And so they have, they have built in a conditioned form of rich people. You know, they step on others to get there. Yeah. Uh, even if they're warm, kind, and generous. Uh, back there someplace is probably some condition. <laughs> I've worked on my money blocks. That's fine. <laughs> Mama's like, money don't go in trees. If you, you're rich, what was it? You're a show off and all of these different beliefs I used to have. Yeah, hold on a minute. I got to take care of this phone call. Okay. This. Um, so, so, but 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 let me let me let me let me go on with that, that answer. I'm going to tell you a little story. When I was growing up, my my parents were very blue collar people. They didn't have much of an education and this kind of thing. And my father would come home. I'm like ten years old, and he would complain about money stuff. You know. And I remember one day <laughs> he was he was complaining rather rigorously about the price of bread. You know, you go to the store and the price of bread. And I'm listening, I'm sitting there listening. He's my father, he knows everything, right? So I gotta get closer to the camera to see this, okay? He leans across the table towards my mother, and I'm watching this. And he says, All they care about are their, see if I can do this right, are their profits. <laughs> so, so I'm sitting there. Oh, you just cut off your sounds. Just cut off, Gary. Well, I think it, I think the problem was these. Somehow or other, these just quit working on me. Oh no, no! They said you'd be brilliant. They're, they're joking about. They didn't realize that somebody could keep me so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> um someone's put they could listen all night absolutely amazing um and people want to know if you're going to come back on if we can invite you back on yeah sure. yes yes oh my gosh um so is there anything that you would like to say to anybody on here now or i've put all the links to your book to your course everything your your free newsletter within here but what would you say for anybody who wants to learn more about optimal emt and the unseen therapist um, well, just get on our website and nose around and, and read, read a bunch of stuff and see where your interest lies. And, and, uh, we've got a lot of, I mean, the, the ebook is an intro ebook. Is it, I, I can't give you everything there cause it, it, the book would be pretty long. Okay. But it's this good solid entry point. Yeah. And if you want to go further, it's there for you to do. Okay. So. I've just been telling them when I started reading the book, I think I read it, when did we speak? We spoke about two weeks ago, didn't we? So it was a few days after that. And literally as I'm reading the book, I found myself getting FOMO, which in the UK is a terminology for fear of missing out. So as I'm reading it, I'm getting excited. I'm thinking, what am I missing? What am I missing? It was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> I'm just well, going to see. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's have a look. So, um, so as Sarah's asking, can we do some demos or are there any places where they can watch some demos? There, there's some on the YouTube channel, isn't there? Um, well, the demos are mostly in our, our webinars and those are for our members. Exactly. But uh, if you go to our homepage and scroll down on the lower right-hand side, if you're on a computer, you will see these impossible healings and and all these other you know results and spiritual there are some there are some demos partial demos involved there um but i also describe in some detail at the very end of the book what we call our personal peace procedure and how to do it okay so uh, they can do their own demo in that way We've asked somebody as well, can we hear the end of his story about his father and the money? You got to the impression oh. part. We need to hear the ending. <laughs> well, I the too. Yeah, I, 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 bought, I bought that, okay. Uh, but my family didn't have any money, so I, one of the, the other things that I had to learn was if I wanted something, 
I had to go get a job. I had to mow somebody's lawn and get some money. <laughs> If I, wanted to, if I wanted to buy a car, I had to go sack groceries for a grocery store and earn money and buy a car and put gas in it. So, so I learned to be a little businessman on my own, but I was carrying around all of this profits kind of thing, you know, those who choose money, you know, or, or profits or there's something evil about them is bad or something like that. I eventually just simply outgrew it. Basically, what I did was I used affirmations. That's all I understood. I would say things like, I earn easily and consistently so many dollars a month, you know. And fortunately, I had I grew up with a uh, mother who was so supportive. She didn't, she had gave birth to me when she was still 16, so she dropped out of high school. And so, and her self-image was so low, she did not want her son, me, uh, to ever experience the kind of rejections and so on that she did. So everything I did, this is a gift. This is a gift, okay? A gift to me from my mom. Everything that I did was to her genuinely astonishing. It was like, it was like if I walked across the floor, the living room floor, <gasps> Yeah, I mean, just the way I would do it. I remember very clearly, I came home from school one day, third grade. What'd you do in school today? Oh, we had a spelling bee. Well, how did you do? I got third. Well, getting third is pretty good, you know, but it won't get you into Harvard, okay. Um, But to my mother, my son got third in the spelling. (gasps) Impossible. I mean, she gushed. And for the next month, she would tell any friend that came over about her wonder son who got third and they would say things like, well, really? How do you spell garage? And I would perform, of course. (gasps) I grew up that way. Most people don't. And so when I was using affirmations, I didn't have much competition with them and they fell into place better. Not everybody has that. But when you do do affirmations and you get what I call tail enders, well, you know, who you who are you kidding? Only only you got to step on everybody in sight, you know. You don't want to to get make a lot of money. You don't want to do that, you know. So keep me right in my place, you know. But when you get that kind of thing, ah, now that's a pointer. Once you have experience here, that's a pointer to something in your past, a specific event like profits, okay? Um, or many specific events like that. And you just gotta start unfold, you know, un- unraveling them so they're no longer in your way. And then you will get rid then you will get rid of or fade off all these emotional things that will stop you right in your tracks. I don't care how good you are and how many books you read about how to do it. If you are evil for doing it and you don't want to be evil, you're going to stop. Okay. Yeah. What that leads me to this actually, when you mentioned books, this is one thing I'd be fascinated to know. What have been some of the best books that you have read that you think have impacted your journey? Uh, one that got my attention a long, long time ago. It's a classic book. It says, As a Man Thinketh. As oh, is that like Edgar Cayce? No, uh, I'm, forget, uh, I'm forgetting now who wrote it. Uh, if you'll wait a minute, I'll tell you. Hold on, so I've got it right over here. His name is James Allen. James, I'm totally writing that down. James Allen, as a man thinker. Yes, yeah, it's one of it's probably the, the classic book on on you are what you think you are. Okay, but but it will let you know you know your you know, your limits are in your thoughts. Okay, your thoughts are what limits you. But there's that in a lot of books like that. I read lots of books like that. How to Win Friends and Influence People was another I read that classic, one. classic book of a long time ago. But one that I really like in more current time, it was written, I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago, uh, was called Whack on the Side of the Head. Whack. Whack. W-H-A-C-K. Whack on the Side of the Head. Written by Roger Von 
Eck, O-E-C-H, Roger, V-O-N, O-E-C-H. It's a book on creative thinking. Wow. Um, oh, okay. And, and, boy, you read that book and, 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 and all kinds of creative thoughts, sorry, you start seeing how you're limiting yourself simply with your thought. He, he does a beautiful job. It is the classic book on creative just, thinking. Amazing. So that's whack on the side of the head. Oh, this is going to be my nighttime reading now. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just going to see, has anybody got any more questions for Gary? But Gary, this interview has been absolutely bloody amazing. It's been, I can't believe, how, like, I just can't get over the comments. Everybody has absolutely loved you. Everyone. Is there anything that you would like to say? No, it's been a thrill. It's been a thrill. Uh, <laughs> you want to do it again? We'll do it again. Yeah. <laughs> I think the next interview, they'll want to go more into um, spirituality, everything, like digging really, really deep. Amazing. Sure. Sure. Okay. Oh, thank you so much, Gary. You've been an absolute pleasure. And thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone that's tuned in. Do you know what we've pretty much had? We've had um, around 330-odd people consistently on. Then we've had people on LinkedIn and people on Instagram. So if anybody wants to know more about Gary's course, please, please, please feel free to send myself a message and I can send you in the right direction but everything is above this video, all his links to his free newsletter, his website, his course, everything. Um, and I would strongly, strongly, strongly recommend you download that free PDF book. It's bloody brilliant. Thank you so much, Gary. All right. Oh, I'm catching it. Hey, everybody. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah.